Hello everyone, this is Medical Gateway and in this part we are going to study regarding the monocyte macrophage system which is also known as the reticuloendothelial system. Now what is monocyte macrophage system? So all the monocytes and macrophage macrophages in the body are collectively known as monocyte macrophage system. So all the monocytes or macrophages present in skin, lungs, J tract, lymph and blood all collectively form monocyte macrophage system. So let's discuss each of them individually. So what is the function of monocytes and macrophages? As you all know that monocytes are present in the blood, they then enter into the tissues and are converted into macrophages. So monocytes are converted into tissue macrophages. So these tissue macrophages can be of two types. One the mobile tissue macrophages and the other ones are the fixed tissue macrophages. The mobile tissue macrophages are the ones which are roaming here and there in the tissues uh, ready to attack the foreign bodies where fixed macrophages are the macrophages which are resting in the tissues. Uh, these fixed uh, macrophages will be converted into the mobile ones when needed. Other than the monocytes and the tissue macrophages, we do have specialized endothelial cells like lymph nodes, bone marrow and spleen. Okay, lymph node, bone marrow and spleen. So these specialized and endothelial cells have collections of macrophages sitting in them. Okay, so what is the main function of monocytes or macrophages? Their function is related to the defense. Whenever there is foreign invader, these macrophages will go and eat them up. So where should be these macrophages located? So ideally, these macrophages should be located at all those points in the body from where the germs can enter into the body. So the germs can enter into the body from the skin. So macrophages are located inside the skin. So the macrophages located inside the skin are known as histiocytes. The histiocytes are the specialized macrophages located in the skin. So whenever you got, you got any uh, entry of any foreign invader through the skin, the histiocytes will go and eat them up. Then the second entry point in the body is lungs. We are continuously breathing and inhaling. So in the air, any foreign organism can enter inside the body through lungs. So lungs also have specialized macrophages known as lung macrophages. So anything entering into the lungs, lung macrophages will go and they will try to eat that foreign body. Now that foreign body can be of two types, then foreign body can be digestible or that foreign body can be indigestible. So if the foreign body is digestible, the macrophages will eat it and then will simply digest it. Whereas if the foreign body is indigestible, then the lung macrophages will try to eat it, but they will not be eaten up or they will not be killed by the macrophages. Then what the macrophages do in that case? The macrophages will form a giant cell capsule around that foreign invader. For instance, if, if this is the lung, okay, and if someone has got tuberculosis infection by mycobacterium tuberculi into the lungs. Now the macrophages are unable to eat this one uh, TB infection, the mycobacterium tuberculi infection. They cannot break it down, they cannot eat it up. Then what the macrophages are going to do? The macrophages will surround this mycobacterium tuberculi forming a capsule around it and they will limit its movement and they will limit its damaging effects on the lungs. So this is one macrophage, this is another one, this is another one. So there are six macrophages collectively f f forming a barrier around this mycobacterium tuberculi and they are limiting its spread. So this is known as a giant cell capsule. So the things like 
tuberculosis uh, and the conditions like tuberculosis uh, silica dust inhalation and carbon particles they all are surrounded by the macrophages forming a giant cell capsule and protecting the lungs from the damaging effect of these foreign particles okay so other than the skin and the lungs the other entry point is through the GI tract if we eat anything it goes into our stomach then the intestines so from there from the intestines the foreign particles can enter into our blood so now what happens that from the intestine the blood goes directly to liver via the portal circulation so if we eat anything all the nutrients and even if there is any foreign particle foreign body any virus any bacteria inside the food it will go from intestine into the blood and then the portal circulation will take this foreign organism to the liver then there in the liver we have specialized macrophages which are known as Kupffer cells okay so the specialized macrophages located in the liver are known as Kupffer cells these Kupffer cells will eat anything up and eat any foreign body coming from the intestine via the portal circulation so this is how it is if we eat something for instance and it has some bacteria in it then the bacteria will move through the portal circulation into this liver and there in the liver are the Kupffer cells and that Kupffer cell will break down that foreign body that will eat that foreign body will kill that foreign body okay so this is so these are the three entry points from where a foreign body can enter into the human body and at all these points there are macrophages in the form of army that will kill the foreign invader so histiocytes in skin lung macrophages in lungs and Kupffer cells in the GI tract or to be precise Kupffer cells in the liver okay then if now if, uh, if there is any foreign organism which has one way or the other which has entered into any tissue then where it can go from the tissues now from the tissues it can go to two places it can go to the lymph or it can go into the blood so we need specific check posts in the lymphatic system and we need a check post in the circulating blood so the check posts are in the lymphatic systems we have lymph node and lymph nodes are filled with macrophages so if any foreign organism has entered into any tissue from there the tissue the foreign invader will enter into the lymph because all the extracellular fluid is drained and in finally into the lymph so the foreign invader enter into the lymph when in the lymphatic system the foreign organism is moving finally it reaches the check post of the lymphatic system which is lymph node now in the lymph node there are macrophages which will kill that foreign invader now if we see the structure of the lymph node it has afferent lymphatics entering into the lymph node and efferent lymphatics which are move which are exiting the lymph nodes and inside the lymph nodes there are nodal medullary sinuses so these nodal medullary sinuses are where the macrophages are present and where they will eat the foreign body so this is how a lymph node looks so this is a lymph node and this these are the afferent lymphatics which are entering into the lymph node and these are the efferent lymphatics which are moving out from the lymph node so efferent lymphatics to the afferent lymphatics the foreign body is entering the lymph node now here in the lymph node there are medullary sinuses so lymph in the medullary sinuses is flowing and so and these are the mac and, and there are located the macrophages so these macrophages will eat anything going through the medullary sinuses and finally the lymph will be cleared of the foreign body while moving out of the efferent lymphatics so now I have said the foreign body can enter into the two things one is lymph and the other one was the blood
So if the foreign bodies has entered in the blood, then we need some check post in the blood. So the check posts present in the blood are basically the spleen and the bone marrow. So spleen is the one thing which filters the blood, which cleans the blood, and spleen has macrophages present in them. Okay? So whenever the blood is flowing, that blood has to pass through the spleen. And that spleen is acting as a filter. And it's, so the spleen has an afferent artery through which the blood enters the spleen. And there, the, in the spleen, there is trabeculi of splenic red pulp. So spleen has two parts. One is white pulp and the other one is red pulp. So red pulp is related to the blood cells, the raw RBCs, red blood cells, whereas the white uh, pulp is related to the white blood cells, where there are the macrophages. Located. So in the trabeculi of splenic red pulp, the blood is moving and from there the splenic macrophages will sort out the foreign invaders and will eat them up. And the blood, blood will be cleaned and will move out of the venous sinuses. So this is how a spleen looks. This is the splenic artery and this is the splenic vein. Through the splenic artery, the blood enters into the spleen and this spleen has two parts. One is white pulp, this white colored white pulp, and the other one is red pulp, this red colored red pulp. So the blood cells are moving inside the red pulp and there there are the foreign bodies uh, which are uh, sorted out by the macrophages and they will eat them up. So this is all regarding a monocyte macrophage system, which is also known as reticuloendothelial system. So this is a whole system of macrophages and monocytes and specialized endothelial cells, which are preventing body from the infections. And basically, these are the sites where the macrophages are located. The macrophages can be located in the skin, which are histiocytes, in the lungs, which are lung macrophages, in the GI tract, which are cofer cells, in the lymphatic system, the macrophages are located in the lymph node, in the blood, the macrophages are basically uh, located in an organ, which is known as spleen, where there are a lot of macrophages, which cleans the blood. So this is it. This was monocyte macrophage system. See you in next part.